We are continuing our commitment here at WTOL 11 to protecting our water. We have heard your questions about the recent heavy rainfall and what it might mean for the algae bloom. Charter boat captains have already reported some of the earliest blooms in recent history. Now following one of the wettest Junes on record, meteorologist Ryan Weekman is tracking just what we should expect this summer. And it wasn't this bad this morning, but it's slowly coming up right now. Fields looked more like lakes. That's what they're doing now. They're pumping the water back out. Creeks like rivers and streets became rapids. So much water and it all ends up in Lake Erie. The Maumee River, so important to transporting key nutrients that make algae blooms pop, just recorded its highest June discharge since records began in 1930. Heidelberg's National Center for Water Quality Research say this has been a very unusual month on the Maumee. At its peak, over 90,000 cubic feet of water per second were flowing past the Maumee's Waterville gauge. And all that additional runoff of phosphorus and nitrogen significantly enhances the potential for algae on Lake Erie. Thick, green, nasty, and what it's mid-June, so we're a month earlier than normal. After a relatively dry spring, it appeared the chances for a large algae bloom on Lake Erie, it was relatively low. Following one of the wettest Junes in our history, though, that has changed. And even on the latest satellite imagery, you can see all of the sediments coming out of the Maumee and Detroit rivers into the western basin. Even some of these sediments coming all the way to the central part of the lake. Of course, one of the big rainfall events that we had was last weekend, and the rainfall totals, they fell right over the Maumee Rivershed. In fact, put this in perspective, between 200 and 300 billion gallons of water fell in the Maumee Rivershed last weekend alone, something that will continue to drive the potential for a large algae bloom. In addition to field runoff, sewer overflow from cities and towns along the river are also contributing roughly 10% of the phosphorus. Already, we've seen isolated pockets of algae growing, but test samples revealed no microcystin, the organism responsible for last year's water crisis. The next month will be important to watch the lake water temperatures, which are now passing 70 degrees. The more sunny days we see, the quicker it will be able to warm up. The critical reading is typically 80 degrees and warmer for ideal algae production. This season, there will be new ways to track the growing algae blooms. Unlike last year, there will be new real-time sampling buoys in the lake. This will give water treatment plants and public advanced tracking and warning of a potential harmful algae bloom. Right now, it appears the algae season on Lake Erie is waking up from a winter and spring slumber. The question isn't, will there be an algae bloom, but rather, how big will it be? That was Ryan Weekman reporting. We are continuing our commitment to you this summer 